Hello, I'm Mark Lowdy. You often read in the newspaper, the market went up, the market went down. But how do you, as a retail investor, take advantage of these moves in the market? Because after all, the market is several hundred stocks. Han Chung, who's managing director at State Street Global Advisors, is uh, here with me to help us answer just this question. So, how do you take advantage of the broader market moves rather than just the moves of one or two stocks? Well, a great way to do this is using exchange traded funds or ETFs. Um, these are investments that are listed on the Singapore Exchange. Investors buy and sell these just like any other stock, uh, just like any other share, and it provides broad exposure to a range of different uh, asset classes, such as equities, bonds, or indeed commodities. Now, so, so it trades like a stock, but it acts like a mutual fund, like a unit trust which people might be familiar with. But it's not exactly the same as a unit trust, right? Because a unit trust is generally managed by a team of people who try to pick winners. That's right. For, the, uh, for ETFs, generally speaking, um, they're managed on an index basis. They track indices. So for example, if you want to invest in the blue chip companies in Singapore through the Straits Times Index, there's an ETF, the Spider STI in, uh, ETF that will give you exposure to that particular index. Similarly, if you want to invest in the gold price, we have the Spiders uh, gold shares product that will also invest in um, the, the, the gold as a commodity. And as a result, you then get, uh, I guess, a, a tracking of the index. Now, this has advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, I mean, the main advantage is that you do get that broad diversification. Uh, for example, all the leading companies in Singapore through the Spider STI product. Uh, the main disadvantage is, of course, that um, that's, that's what you get. You get that uh, tracking. It provides a, uh, you know, a source of returns that tracks the index, um, no better, no worse. Um, obviously, there are fees involved as well, but those fees tend to be uh, lower than comparable um, unit trusts. All right, so it's a passive investment, as yep. they say, rather than an active one. I guess for investors who, who say, okay, well, rather than pick stocks, I could just buy one ETF, one uh, units in this ETF. Um, but what happens to things like dividends? What happens if there is a takeover within the companies that, that are listed in the index? What happens also when, let's say, there is a share split and all of those other things that you sometimes read about in a newspaper? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I mean, um, you know, there are challenges to picking stocks. First of all, you need to understand the company. You probably need to read the financial statements of the company and get a good sense of whether you want to invest in that company or not. By investing in an ETF, a single investment gives you broad exposure to the market as a whole. It gives you a very important uh, uh, benefit of diversification, which for most investors is, is, a, is a very important feature of investing. What that means, essentially, is that you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Uh, furthermore, in terms of dividends, the ETF managers will administer the process of collecting dividends and what normally happens is they pay out the dividends uh, periodically uh, uh, after the fees of managing the, uh, the ETF product, which again is typically lower than a unit trust product. Paid out to the unit holders directly. That's right. It's not somehow accumulated within the price of the ETF. Most ETFs do actually pay out the, uh, the dividend in recognition of the fact that investors, particularly long-term pension investors, actually do want to extract a dividend, uh, you know, an income from the investment product. So ETFs, broadly speaking, do pay out um, uh, whatever income is collected through a distribution, either quarterly, semi-annually, or indeed annually. Mm. Now, for those people who fear that they're getting bamboozled by yet another structured product, which has received so much negative press, what about the Spider uh, ETFs that you've just mentioned, the Spider STI and the Spider Gold shares? Are these so-called structured? No, those are, those are ETFs that are invested uh, in the underlying securities. So the Spider e STI ETF, for example, will be invested in all the, all the blue chip companies in Singapore that your viewers will be very, very familiar with. Uh, they essentially comprise the STI index that we obviously are very familiar with. We track the performance of the STI every day. Similarly, for the Spider Gold product, we actually inf invest in physical bullion. So these are essentially gold bars that we can physically identify, we can touch them if we wanted to, and uh, we keep this in a large vault in London, and this, these are physical 
assets that that provide the uh, the security behind the, uh, the the collateral behind the ETFs that allows investors to, to get exposure to gold bullion, but in a much more uh, convenient package form rather than holding individual gold bars. Well, I was going to ask, why not just buy the gold and uh, keep it in in a safe somewhere? Well, you know, gold bars are very expensive things to buy, uh, Mark. Uh, okay, coins. <laughs> coins are possible. Uh, coins are certainly things that. Um, that investors have used in the past, but don't forget there are other issues to investing in coins. First of all, physical security, the lack of convenience, the cost of buying and selling is higher, uh, coupled with you know GST aspects to investing in gold. The bid ask spread for our gold ETF product, for example, is much tighter of the order of maybe uh, you know anywhere between 0.3 to 0.7 percent. Uh, it trades just like any other um, stock. You buy and sell this on the Singapore exchange and it settles on the CDP and obviously the CDP structure provides enormous comfort to investors in terms of making sure that their investments are held uh, through a secure depository. Uh, in turn the gold is as I mentioned before held through a, cus um, through a custodian uh, who's based in London and the vaulting facilities are those that uh, hold the actual physical bullion secure as well. Mm. If you had to admit any downsides to the to the gold uh, spider gold shares, for example, or the uh, the spider STI ETF, what would they be? Well, the, the, the main risks are associated with the investment themselves. So uh, it's up to, I think, investors to really take command of their own wealth management. I mean, um, the person who knows their needs best is actually the individual. So, but. Um, uh, once they decide they want to invest in gold, they will be exposed to the ups or indeed the downs of the gold price. Uh, similarly, if they invest in the Spider STI, they'll be exposed to the up or down movements of the uh, Straits Times Index. Uh, obviously, what we believe is as a long-term investment proposition, um, putting some of your um, wealth aside in equity markets over the long term is uh, you know, a sensible thing to do for, for most investors. Similarly, for most investors who are perhaps concerned about the market environment, we're still in a, you know, in, in a global financial crisis. It's abated somewhat, but for those of us who are concerned about um, you know, protecting their wealth, gold actually provides uh, quite an interesting hedge against other financial assets. Most of your readers will be aware that the one asset that's performed very well has been the gold price amidst quite a turbulent uh, market environment. So that's yeah. the role of gold, really as a way to, uh, to hedge one's total wealth. Finally, if investors are interested, uh, how do they actually go about buying these ETFs? Well, the first thing they should do is obviously really understand what they're buying. Uh, the, the cardinal rule of investing is never buy something that you don't understand. Um, one of the, I think, interesting uh, aspects of ETFs is that they are relatively simple. Uh, they're very transparent. Um, the, uh, all the ETF providers provide detailed information about the ETFs on their website and other brochures. Um, once they understand um, that, um, once they have an appreciation of the ETF and what they want to do with that ETF, the next steps are relatively simple. You buy and sell this just like any other share on the Singapore Exchange. You need a CDP account uh, and also you need to have a brokerage relationship either with uh, you know, online or through a mm -hmm. uh, brokerage contact and you buy and sell this just like you would any other share. Most of the uh, ETFs are actually uh, um, uh, are also included in the CPF uh, investment scheme as well. Therefore, uh, you can actually uh, use CPF funds to invest in uh, you know, many of these ETFs, including the uh, Spider Gold Share product as well as the Spider STI product. Thanks for coming to talk to us about it today. Thank you. Han Chung from State Street Global Advisors. Here is the website for more information, crs.org.sg slash SIW2012. SIW, of course, is Singapore Investment Week, which is on from the 25th to the 31st of August. I'm Mark Laudy. Thanks for watching.